It's Friday, May 2nd, and it's time for your weekly recap. Yay! Okay, that was ridiculous. That is the new project in the Geeky Times. New Geeky Times is out right now, and in that there is a cutout project, as there is in some of the Geeky Times. There's usually a project or, or puzzle of some sort, and this week it is a Chris puppet. So, I just thought I'd show that to you. Nate Wilson, hey Chris, what's the best rope effects for kids shows? Thanks! The two effects that I use is the Jumping Knot by Daryl and Frayed Knot by me. Before we get too far into the recap, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who participated in the Stir Crazy giveaway that we did last week. To find out who won, go check out the Magic Geek blog. That's www.magicgeek.com forward slash blog. And I will post the winner there. To find out what's up for grabs this week, keep watching right here on the weekly recap. Andrew Parker, are there any other tricks or routines that someone could add into the frayed knot routine? Yes, frayed knot is a modular routine. You could put things in, you can take things out. The ropes are just the right size to do a lot of different variations on rope tricks. And a really good DVD, if you wanna step it up, is Fiber Optics by Richard Sanders. Logan Magic 98 hey Chris, I wanna buy the guide to loops, but I can't find it anywhere. Where can I get it? I think when they put out the inner circle, they discontinued the animated miracles booklet, which was the booklet that, that taught you loops stuff. So in order to get that, you would have to get the inner circle. You should get that anyway, because it's a fantastic gimmick that protects your loops. Another thing you might wanna look into is the loops DVD set that has a lot of information on it and it could help you out. Mr. Gouge Bosson, hi Chris, what is the best way to seal the ends of a rope? I've tried a bunch of different ways over the years and I kind of go back and forth. What I used to do was kind of make them look like the ends of a shoelace by putting tape around them before I cut them. You can also dip them in glue. If they are a nylon rope, you can burn the edges and sort of round them off and that'll kind of melt it all together. You can also, if it is a rope that has no core, you can fold the ends back into the rope and sew it and then that'll keep all the ends together and look really nice. Okay, this week I wanna to talk to you about In3. This is a coin set that allows you to do some extremely visual coin magic where a copper coin changes into a silver coin or a silver coin changes into a copper coin. Very clean at the end and you do it with no cover. You just hold the coin there and boop, it changes into the other coin. They can be holding one of the coins and, and have it change in their hands. Very powerful magic. Not a whole lot of routines taught on here. There's two routines, but I feel like the two routines are really good. And I feel like if you have any sort of background in coin magic, you can come up with some other really great stuff with this. This is the N3 coin set, and you definitely want to go check it out at magicgeek.com. Funky Magic, what is the best DVD for rope magic smiley face? Fiber Optics is a fantastic uh, DVD on rope magic. It's more advanced moves, but it's super visual stuff and really great modular things that you can put into an existing rope routine. Miles from Facebook, question for weekly recap. Hey Chris, I know this question isn't about rope, but I thought I'd ask it anyway. Does the classified case come with a stand? If not, can you attach a stand to it? Thanks, hope to hear from you. Unfortunately, the classified case does not come with a stand, but there are a few options for modifying your case and building a stand for it. One option is to get a piece like this. This is a standard hardware sort of thing that you can get at a hardware store. It basically makes it so you can screw a pipe into this flat thing. This flat thing can get bolted into the bottom of your case. And then you can use something like a light stand, a tri-legged light stand sort of thing. JB weld a piece of pipe to this and then you screw this on when you're ready to perform. Another option which I like is to get a quick release system from like a tripod, like you get a tripod, mount the quick release system on there and then you can release the case easily and put it onto the stand easily. You can also adjust the angle and the height of the stand. If you choose to take on a big project like this, what I would recommend before you drill any holes in your close-up case is to do it with a piece of plywood or something like that first to make sure that it works, that it's the right steadiness for you, that all the components fit together nicely. Then take that apart and build it into your case. Gavin, hey Chris, I don't usually use rope magic because I think it's kind of the same thing, cutting and restoring, color changing, etc. What are 
are some rope tricks that are different from those. Thanks for the advice for my talent show last week. Something that we as magicians need to keep in mind is that not all audiences have seen magic before. So even though you think that a rope trick is the same thing over and over again, it's cutting the rope and restoring it or making the rope change color, an audience may have not ever seen that and is surprised by it. That's why it's a classic. That's why it keeps getting reinvented. So I don't think you should worry that much about being different from every other magician in that respect. Just do strong magic. That being said, there are a couple of things that I would recommend. Uh, there are escapes like the in and out rope escape, which is fantastic. There's a trick called roped where the rope goes through your body. There's the jumping knot where a portion of the rope changes color because a knot has jumped over from one rope to another. So there are other rope tricks out there, uh, but just keep in mind that you don't need to not do a trick just because it's the same trick that other magicians do. Just make sure that you're doing the strongest magic that fits your character that your audience is responding to and enjoying. 444RR, hey Chris, my question is, sometimes I feel that rope tricks go on too long and it's the same moves over and over. What are some ways to make the trick not feel so tedious? This is a good question because it spans beyond rope magic. It's the same with coin magic, coins across. Why, why are we gonna watch a coin go from one hand to another over and over and over again? Or ambitious card, why is that card gonna pop up to the top over and over again? Why are we gonna be entertained by this more than one time? Here's the best advice I can give you. Only do it once or figure out how to build it so that as you go, it gets more impossible, more visual, more amazing to some sort of climax at the end. You definitely want to have an ender. You wanna have something at the end of that routine that just kind of blows them away and is the best part of the routine. And then you sort of wanna build up to that. As you perform this and try it out on audiences, always pay attention to your audience and find out where the lulls are. Wherever those lulls are, you either need to step it up move it back further in the routine to, a, to the earlier in the routine so that the build is happening because when there's a lull, the build isn't going, it drops. So if you have, so it's, if it goes down to here, then you wanna put that in that spot in your routine so that it's just a steady incline to awesomeness. Anyway, listen to your audience and if they seem to be getting bored, either cut it or move it to an earlier part in the routine. Today we're giving away the trick Link by Christoph Rosius. This is a linking cards routine with signed cards. Very visual, cool gimmick. Definitely wanna check this out at magicgeek.com and watch the trailer. And the way you win this is you use a coupon code. The coupon code is LINK, L-I-N-K, all lowercase. That's gonna give you 5% off and put your name in the running for next Friday. The coupon code will expire next Friday and I will draw a name and you will maybe win this awesome thing. And if you didn't, then you got 5% off your order, which is still pretty awesome, if you ask me. All right, that's all the time we have for this week. Next week, I wanna to talk to you about handkerchief and or silk magic. So if you have any questions regarding those things, please leave them in the comment section down below. Or if you have questions on anything else, I take those questions as well and I answer them here on the weekly recap. Be sure you subscribe because by subscribing, you're going to get notified when we post new videos. And we post videos like this one where we answer questions, we post reviews of tricks, and of course, we post demos, live demos without any cuts. Boom, there's the magic. You know what you're gonna buy before you buy it, which is awesome. So definitely do that. Check out these other videos on the side. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.